we can actually see within this, we've got a really nice example here of uh, clay skins. And so this is evidence where the clay, the T in this case refers to the fact that it's an alluvial horizon. So I, alluvial means things are coming into it. And I remember the T suffix basically because it's a textural contrast with the horizon above where it's got additional clay relative to the horizon above. And one of the clues we have that clay has been translocated from above into the lower uh, horizons is the presence of these shiny faces. Uh, so on the face of the structural units here, we see these shiny clay faces. We can also see a really, we can, with this sample, we can see the reddish marks along the, the ped faces as well. So where the peds are these individual structural units. And so we can see some nice uh, red streaks here representing again, the iron oxide deposition. And so this would make this a BTG horizon, significant evidence of uh, glaying or the occurrence of reducing conditions. In terms of how we might describe the, uh, the structure of this, if we take these, the, this, this nice chunk that we have here and start to break it apart, it, would, it breaks apart most readily into, into, uh, into blocks. And so uh, in some cases we would see uh, columnar structure developing, but in this case, see how it breaks just nicely into blocks. And each of those blocks has those shiny clay skin faces associated with it. So each of the structural units is basically a, uh, uh, a little block with clay skin coatings and the presence of models associated with it. So right in here then we can see the various the, the blockiness of the overall structural units and the individual shiny uh, shiny faces associated with that. So the clay skins associated with that and the nice bright red models all through here uh, representing where as the soil this water drained out of the soil iron oxides were deposited basically rusty spots or models within the soil itself so we also used uh, an auger so the a dutch auger to to move down or to get down into deeper into the bottom of this this soil it got quite difficult to dig as we were going as we were going down because of the heavy clay and so at about a meter depth we got into a sea our sea horizon but in this case, unlike some of the other soils that we looked at, where we were able to use the, the dilute hydrochloric acid to find effervescence, because this soil has had so much water movement through it, we've actually seen most of the calcium carbonates have been leached beyond, uh, beyond the depth that we, that we augured to. So from about a meter to a meter and uh, about 120 centimeters, I guess, or maybe we went down to 130, we're seeing a CG horizon. And so this is, that's where these samples came from. So this is a sample from the CG horizon, the one that we collected using the Dutch auger in the bottom of the pit. And so it's a C horizon because uh, we see a, a significant change in terms of the, the, uh, the texture and structure relative to the BTG above. Uh, we've got, in this particular example, we're seeing a really good demonstration of what we would call a dull gray or reduced color. So you'll recall that I talked about in terms of the formation of these, when the iron is reduced, it tends to be removed from the matrix. And so we end up with a sort of a, a much duller color. And then the models get formed where the, as the, as the soil dries out, the, the water, uh, the iron oxides form within the pores of that. And so we see the matrix here. So the sort of the, the, the bulk soil, uh, where in the sea horizon we've got basically a massive uh, structure or structureless uh, uh, situation here. And then where there are pores within that massive structure, we've got some iron oxides that have formed here. So instead of the, using the 10, 10 YR color chart, which we use for most of these, uh, most of the, the prairie soils, for this particular soil, we actually move over to the 2.5 Y chart because that reduced color is just a little bit uh, different from most of, the, most of the prairie soils we see. And so if we overlay this on here, we actually see that we're probably more on the order of uh, the 2.5 uh, Y and tending towards 4 over 1, or even depending where we are relative to those models. Actually, probably 5 over 2 would be a good representation here. And so describing color is always a little bit subjective, but you're just wanting to get within you know, a close approximation of the overall color family here. So I would probably call this a 10 YR 5 over, two, or sorry, 2.5 Y 5 over 2 in terms of describing the, the, the color of this particular CG horizon. 
So in terms of this pro in terms of this profile, we're seeing that characteristic uh, AEG BTG contrast. And so comparing this to some of the other soils that we've looked at, um, um, the reason that we know that this is a glycol as opposed to say a, a chernozemic order, even though it's got the pronounced uh, AH horizon, because it has the glaying within 50 centimeters of the surface, if you were to look back through your soil classification keys, you would see that this would actually drop out as a glycol before we got to the chernozemic order. The, the models take precedent over the, the presence of the AH horizon. In terms of the overall grape groups, what makes this a humic luvic glycol as opposed to one of the other grape groups, there are three major grape groups for the glycolic order. There's the, the, just the glycol proper, which, has, which lacks an AH, or uh, uh, the, the BT horizon. So we've got a little bit of willow fuzz coming through here. So uh, it's not actually snowing here in June. <laughs> we've got uh, we, the, the glycol grape group then lacks the AH or the BT horizon. The Luvic grape group, which is what we have here, has the pronounced uh, um, A, AEG BTG sequence. And if we, if we had uh, just a thickened AH horizon, but no AE or BTG, AEG or BTG horizons, then it would be a part of the humic, uh, humic great group. Within this then, just like with every other soil order, there, we can have gradations within the subgroups to other, to other orders, and so that becomes one of the subgroup designations. So sometimes we'll see poorly drained soils in broad level lacustrine, glacial lacustrine deposits, and so there we might see some characteristics that would tend towards the vertisolic order, so then it might be a member of the vertic great group. And even though the groundwater is close to the surface here, this particular groundwater isn't high in sodium salts, but very often if we've got a situation where we've got groundwater near the surface that's contributing to the prolonged saturation or anaerobic conditions, we might start to grade towards a solonets great or solonets subgroup within the uh, within the, the, the glycolic order. So basically what we're looking at here is a humic luvic glycol on uh, a clay glacial till and uh, glacial till parent material with a bit of an overlay on top of that. Uh, a, a, an, an input of material deposited on the surface from uh, the surrounding upland positions.